Today's shoutouts go to Latifa Brazica, Coaster Daddy, and American Cat. If you want to get featured in my next video, then just comment something down below. If I like it, I'll put you at the beginning of next week's video. Now are my predictions to what might come to Busch Gardens Williamsburg following 2020. Enjoy. Pantheon is shaping up to be a fantastic fit for Busch Gardens Williamsburg, but for today we are going to be looking past Pantheon and make some predictions for future expansion. We are going to take in all the information we can get such as analyzing the lineup, taking a look at gaps in the lineup, possible ride placement, manufacturers they have worked with recently, and narrow it down to our top 5 predictions to what might come to this world class theme park following 2020. So let's begin by taking a look at Busch Gardens lineup. The park has a hyper, dive, invert, a wood coaster, a family launch coaster, a triple launch coaster, a quadruple launch coaster, a kitty coaster, and even a classic aero custom looper. Right off the bat, Busch Gardens nails the variety with lots of great attractions to choose from. Highlights being two 200 foot drop coasters, one of which has a vertical angle of descent, an inverted coaster, wood coaster, and three launch coasters. So looking for gaps in the lineup is tricky. I feel like they could use another unique coaster. Zach, what do you mean by unique coaster? There are lots of unique rides out there. Well, for me, a unique coaster is a ride that not every park has, but it would change depending on where their location is, the space they have, and the coasters their competitors have, and the list goes on and on. Subjectively, I believe that every park should have a kitty coaster, a coaster over 200 feet, a wood coaster, and a ride of inversions. Expanding from this is a unique coaster. For example, a wing, flyer, freesman, invert, dive. Not all parks are gonna have this and depending on what kind of business they want to run would depend on what crowd drawing rides they have. Looking at Busch Gardens, they already have the basic lineup of rides I think every park should have and they even have some unique coasters, but I think it's time for them to add another one. Also, another gap in their lineup is a big wood coaster. Everyone expected Invader to be bigger than it was and since there is not another dominating wood coaster anywhere in the area, I think that this would be an awesome option. Also, keep in the back of your mind the 355 foot permit that Busch Gardens filed for a few years ago. To sum up my thoughts on gaps the park could fill, I could see a wood coaster bigger than Invader, a unique coaster, and a 355 foot coaster or attraction of some sort. I know there are not a lot of gaps in their lineup, but we will be able to expand our options as we look at what type of land the park has for expansion. As we take a look around the park, we are not just looking for areas to build, but we are also looking for elevation and interaction with other rides. For instance, I'm not going to say a Pantheon sized attraction would fit between Griffin and Finnegan's Flyer, that's just not realistic. So let's take a look at our first location, which is beside Verbolton in that vacant land that once housed Drakenfall. Fire. This plot of land is mostly flat, so don't expect a ride to be a terrain coaster like our second spot, which is my personal favorite, and that is right beside the entrance in England. There is a little plot of land to the side of the path that could be used for this coaster. Now, there's one positive and two negatives for a coaster to come to this section. The positive being it would be in a beautiful location. It would be the first ride people see when they walk in, and it would give a roller coaster to the England country, which would be fantastic. The negatives being whatever ride this is, must be either narrow or compact to fit in the space given, so it would need to be a smaller ride. The second negative being the land drops off, kind of forming a valley, but the coaster could interact with the terrain and it would be awesome if it could be kind of like a terrain coaster. I already have an idea in mind for the model that could fit here, and honestly, I don't want to see any other ride take its spot. The next portion of land would be a little north to the area we just discussed, but instead of being an England attraction, it would be an Ireland attraction. Ireland desperately needs a coaster, so a ride that would fit into this land off to the side would be a great Ireland expansion. Next is the land that the remnants of Curse of Dark Castle remain. This could bring three options, either a coaster that is half outside, half inside like Verbolton, a full indoor coaster, or taking the building down completely for more space to build something new. For the final spot, I can see the land between Italy and Loch Ness Monster being used for a good attraction. The only negative this land gives is it slopes towards the Ryan, so if the station is placed at the top, then the lift hill would need to be at the end of the ride rather than the beginning. Alright, so those were some possible areas where land can get developed, and now are my official predictions for coasters that we can expect 
expect to come to Busch Gardens Williamsburg following 2020. I have limited them down to my top five options and then at the end I will be sharing what I genuinely think the next coaster will be. These are in no specific order and I can see all of these rides happening. In a matter of fact, I would be very surprised if a different ride comes before the ones I'm about to share, but anyway, let's get into it. Let's get started with that unique coaster I was talking about. This is a mock extreme spinning coaster. A spinning coaster is just what Bush needs and would make a perfect fit. For the location, I can see that last plot of land we discussed or that land near Ireland, but in this case, let's talk about the space near Loch Ness Monster. I think this would be awesome for a few reasons. Mock has shown us they can make terrain coasters specifically for this case spinning coasters and we know SeaWorld works with Mach because they built Cobra's Curse down in Tampa and that was an absolute hit. For the design I can see the station being at the bottom of the hill and a chain lift to bring you up to the top of the hill. A chain lift not a launch. The train would crest the hill and make a 180 turn and come down the mountain and it went up with inversions, airtime, turns to make it go back up the hill. If there is a manufacturer that can do it I think it would be Mach because they did an excellent job with Helix which would be along the same lines being a ride that's built into a hillside. Second is the ride that many expect to come to the park at some point and that is a B&M flyer. Some debate whether it would be a flyer or a wing or both and I say a flyer because I think a wing is too much like a dive coaster and they already have a dive. I think Cedar Point has both because the wing came first then they had the option to expand with a dive but that's not the case for Bush. I would rather see the wing take Anaconda's place at King's Dominion. As for the land this would fit into, this is strange but I would love for it to squeeze somewhere in between the space that I'm showing you now. The land is hard to explain but as for the layout, I think a flying dinosaur layout would be excellent. However, just like the spinning coaster, the land that I'm showing you now slopes down towards the Ryan, so hopefully the designers can work around the terrain and use it to their advantage. The next coaster is my personal favorite and it would go in that small part of land near England and matter of fact I would love to see this ride come before any other but that's just my opinion. This is an RMC Raptor. We know that SeaWorld is now working with RMC for Iron Gwazi and because Iron Gwazi will be an absolute hit the chain will want to add more to their parks and a Raptor at Busch Gardens Williamsburg is an absolute must. This would be a custom layout to fit the train and would be small. I could see it having more of an out and back layout and of course it would be part of the England country. Moreover, for the color scheme, I am not sure about the supports, but I feel like white track would be perfect. Next is strange and the least likely on this list, but I could see her reusing the old Curse of Dark Castle building. This would be another family coaster, a steel equivalent of Invader. I could see it being something kind of like Fire Chaser Express at Dollywood, but instead of Gerslauer, it would be an Intamin. A fun idea for the layout could be starting off with a chain lift into some airtime hills and bank turns where it would then dive into the old Curse of Dark Castle building for some storytelling. Here it would hit the backwards launch where it would propel it into a spike while the track ahead of it switches and then it would go forwards, do some more elements and then eventually just pull back into the station. It would pretty much just be a big combination of Verbolton, Invader, and Pantheon. Lastly, before my official prediction is a massive dueling GCI, one like the IAPA 2018 concept. This would give the people the GCI they wanted and would give the park an awesome dueling coaster which is something else they don't have. For land, the spot next to Verbolton would be perfect, giving it enough space for two separate sides. Now is my official prediction for what I truly believe will be the next coaster for Busch Gardens Williamsburg, and I do believe that it will come sooner than we expect. It will go into that land next to Verbolton, where I just said that the GCI would fit, and it would be an Intamin Giga, much like Red Forest, and it would reach a height of 355 feet. I already made a video of my thoughts on the rumor, so I'll put a card at the top of the screen so you can get a more in-depth idea of my thoughts on this coaster and the 355 foot permit in general. To sum up that video, it will reuse Drakenfire's Q House and will have an LSM launch. It would have a max height of 355 feet and have a top speed of 108 miles per hour. That's going to wrap up this video, but before we go, because I love all of you, I'm going to throw in a bonus coaster. This bonus coaster would go in that Ireland plot of land that stretches out towards the back, but it is a RMC T-Rex. I know many people throw the words T-Rex around way too much, but I truly believe that Busch Gardens Williamsburg is an option to get one. This is least likely, and it would probably be between a Raptor or T-Rex, and I would personally want to see the Raptor come first, but a T-Rex is still an option. 
Hey guys, thanks for watching today's video. If you enjoyed and want to see more just like it, click this playlist right here. If you want to subscribe to my channel, click my little logo right beneath me. And if you are interested in getting featured in my next video, then you just need to do two things. First, click the little logo right beneath me to subscribe to my channel. And second, comment something really cool in the comments down below. If I find it interesting, then I will put you at the beginning of next week's video. I am your host, Zach, from Theme Park Media, signing off, and I will catch you in the next one.